Good afternoon. My name is Todd Ahrens. I'm the president and CEO of Hannibal Regional Healthcare System. Certainly want to welcome all of you to Conference Center Room 1 and, and appreciate you taking time out of your schedule to spend a few minutes talking about uh, the COVID vaccine. Uh, our goal here today would be to provide you a lot of information about the science behind it, the safety, the efficacy, things of that nature, timing as well. Um, and then obviously leave time for your all's questions. We're recording this session so um, we can get this information out publicly if, if it gets to that point. Uh, the one thing I want to stress before I turn this over to Dr. Parikh, we have still not made any determination as an organization as to whether we're going to require or make the vaccine mandatory. Um, that's something we've been talking about for several months. Um, you know, there's a lot of uh, discussion, sometimes heated, uh, both within my team and in the community about the vaccine and, and whether it should be mandatory. So um, I just want you to know that, that that decision has not been made. So uh, this discussion is really out there to, to answer your questions, the anxiety, uh, things you might be wondering about on the vaccine, and that's really what we're trying to accomplish here today. Okay. So without any further ado, I'll turn this over to Dr. Pranav Parikh, and he'll uh, inundate you with scientific information. So Dr. Parikh. Thank you all for coming. Please do not hesitate to ask me questions. I know there are a few people I see writing down, which is a good thing. So, but that's a good start. Okay, I would like to thank uh, Jessica. I think she helped me a lot in putting all the slides together. So thank you to her. Uh, and I'm sure she'll be able to answer some of the questions too. Uh, so COVID-19, just to give you a snapshot of the numbers as of yesterday morning, uh, total cases in the United States about more than 15 million now, and deaths in excess of 280,000. Uh, but at Hannibal Regional, total cases that have been positive that we have tested, uh, I think more in excess of 5,000 patients, uh, but total cases that have been positive are 1266. Patients that have been hospitalized, about 439 as of yesterday morning. And then uh, patients that have passed away due to the COVID-19, about 34. Uh, and our team members that have been uh, positive, 168, but then all these patients that our team members take care of and then the exposure that they have. Uh, so 83 of those team members were classified as having high risk exposure and had to be uh, quarantined. Uh, and then seven out of those 83 turned positive because of that. So I think that's a you know, pretty significant, I mean, if you think about the workforce uh, problems that we all face because of the COVID-19. Okay, uh, this is the picture of the virus that is out there, and you can Google this and you can find this. This is from New England Journal of Medicine. The reason why I'm showing this picture is because so that you can understand where the vaccine is coming from, okay? So the, the spikes that you see around, these are the spike proteins that actually attach, the, the virus attaches to the cells and cause the infection. Uh, so what the, uh, the vaccine is made out of is a small piece of this viral strand here. So this is the small uh, particle, and so they take a small piece of that strand, put this into a lipid molecule, and then they will create a vaccine out of that. And so when they inject that into our body, our body is going to produce antibodies to the spike proteins and so thereby preventing the virus from attaching it to our cells. So the, you may still have a, get exposed to someone, your virus enters your body, but there is no way it can enter or infect any of the cells because you already have those antibodies that are going to attach it to the spider, themselves to the spike proteins. And that is the basic physiology or the biology or virology, I should say, basic virology of uh, the, uh, the, how the vaccine is going to work. These are the different vaccines, the leading vaccines that are out there right now. The two of the ones that we would be interested in, uh, you know, hearing about is the Pfizer vaccine and the Moderna vaccine. They both are under regulatory review right now as we speak. Uh, and if you look at the color code here, they both are RNA, that's ribonucleic acid based vaccine. Uh, and then obviously there are the AstraZeneca is uh, on the third place right now. Uh, they're expecting to release their va vaccine in January, uh, and then uh, that is uh, sort of a non-replicating viral vector. So it's an adenovirus-based vaccine, uh, and they're trying a different vehicle for that. But then there are a few other vaccines that are inactivated virus. They're all made out of, uh, coming out of China. 
Uh, and then the Janssen and Novavax, that's another European companies that are working on developing their own vaccine. And as you can see, there are more than 283 uh, or 287 different vaccines being produced all around the world. You know, uh, different countries are doing their own thing. So um, that's a good thing for, uh, you know, for medical science. So I briefly talked about this, but what is the mRNA? So mRNA, M stands for messenger, and RNA is the ribonucleic acid. Uh, this is nothing new. So what I mean by that is your body or our body produces messenger RNA every single day. That is what actually sends signals to do various biological activities in our body itself. And so this is nothing new. So it's not, not a new concept. This is basic biology or you know, science 101 where uh, I think we all would have learned about DNA and RNA. Uh, what do vaccines do? When we receive a vaccine, it teaches our body to recognize that pathogen, and it triggers that immune response to fight that, uh, that invader or that foreign body. And for example, influenza vaccine that we all get, which is mandated by the state and the country actually, uh, it uses a, a dead or an inactivated influenza virus, and it, in, it's injected, our body produces an immune response. That's why we feel crummy that day or the next day. Our arms hurt and we get a little bit low-grade fever also sometimes. But then you develop that immunity to that influenza vaccine, uh, to influenza virus uh, uh, for the, that year. Uh, so the mRNA, the way this technology is going to work is the, that small protein that is going to be injected is going to uh, give our body a, sort of a, a, a pathway to produce antibodies uh, to the COVID-19 virus. Peak protein production will happen. So let's say if you get dose one today, your, uh, your immunity starts around day 12, and then you get the second dose on day 28, and we'll talk about that, uh, and then you, uh, day 21, and then you develop full immunity on day 28. So that's how that, you know, the vaccine is gonna work. How did they make this vaccine so fast? So some, you know, there's obviously one of the rumors that this vaccine's you know, too rapid, you know, production and, uh, you know, research, and so maybe it's not safe. But this technology has been around for a long time. The only prohibiting factor of bringing it this out uh, was uh, because of the, the storage capacity of this vaccine. You know, Keith is here, he can tell you the, the, the freezer that we had to buy so that we could store this vaccine. Uh, you know, it's a very unique thing. I think we did not have it uh, until now. I think when we decided to do this, uh, you know, we ordered the freezer so we could store this vaccine at minus 80 degrees centigrade. And so that's, that has always been, that cold chain uh, has always been the, one of the rate limiting factor of developing this into a, a vaccine that is available all across the country to every hospital or every uh, uh, provider for that matter. One of the problems with mRNA technology is because it is a, that small viral strand if you leave it at room temperature, then it denatures, and then the vaccine becomes ineffective. And that's another reason why it has, has to be stored in such a cold temperature to make, keep its effectiveness. So are these vaccines, have they been tested properly? Uh, you can be rest assured that uh, CDC and FDA are they're doing their due diligence. These companies are doing their due diligence when they are coming out with vaccine. So phase one trial is where they would take a very small group of healthy, generally healthy individuals, and they would inject that vaccine in different doses and different strengths to see what is going to happen. Are those, uh, is there going to be enough immune response in those people, and are they going to have any major adverse events? So in absence of adverse events, you move on to phase two, where you now recruit about 100 or 200 or 300 people and you give, again, with diff from different demographic uh, groups, and you do a randomized controlled trial, again, to see, again, the immune response, how, what to, what's the level of your antibody response that you have, and are you going, and is it safe? And once it passes through that test, then you move on to phase three, where I think thousands of people get enrolled in, your, you know, in this randomized control trial, and they again look at the immune response and the side effect. So just to give you an idea of, uh, and this is just the uh, vaccine approval process, we are currently in number five or six. You know, FDA is reviewing the scientific data and other information. Because of the pandemic, because of a lot of us who deal with uh, the patients and the disease burden that is out there right now and the patients that are dying, 
what the government is doing is they are doing a lot of parallel processing. So for example, while the FDA is still reviewing the data, ideally they would have waited and then sent on their recommendations to the Advisory Committee on Immunization Practices. That's a federal agency that decides when you should get your pneumonia vaccine, when you should get your uh, uh, shingles vaccine, and those, they are the other ones that come out with the guidelines. So what they are currently doing is both the FDA and the ACIP, they both are doing their own reviews in order to save time. So every agency is trying to work together in a simultaneous process, uh, process to avoid wasting time. So that's how this thing is also being sped up a little bit through the uh, you know, bureau bureaucratic process. Okay, so the first vaccine that we are expecting to be released is on uh, December 10th. That is the Pfizer vaccine. So that vaccine has two doses. Uh, uh, they're 21 days apart. Uh, in the phase three trial where they tested about 43,000 people, uh, it was 95% uh, efficacious. It has, uh, you know, the side effect profile from that vaccine or that study is fatigue in about 3.8% of people and headache in about 2%. And the most serious side effect was severe fatigue, severe headache, uh, and extreme chills and severe myalgias. Now, you may have, some of you may have read on the news uh, channels this morning, uh, two patients that received the Pfizer vaccine in England had uh, what is called an anaphylactoid reaction. So it's not anaphylaxis, but anaphylactoid. So the, 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 uh, the reaction is sort of milder version of anaphylaxis. Uh, the patient did not lose consciousness or anything like that. They're just, they had this extreme reaction, their blood pressure dropped, and they were having some shortness of breath. But these two patients had extreme allergies anyway to begin with, and they were, luckily, they were carrying their EpiPen with them. And so their body responded to that foreign invader uh, in a much you know, uh, uh, aggressive response, and that's why they had that level. So the severe fatigue, headache, extreme chills, and myalgias that they're talking about is not enough to in incapacitate people. So I think I know there is some confusion uh, out there about, oh my God, you know, half the nursing force will get the vaccine and all half, will, or you know, more than half, will, get, uh, you know, will not be able to come back to work. But that is not true. I think you know, it's a very uh, small percentage. But yes, like with any other vaccine, people do get some side effects sometimes. The Moderna vaccine, that's 28 days apart. Again, two doses. They are slated for approval on December 17th. Both the vaccines are with FDA right now, and they are currently being reviewed as per, their, uh, as per the, uh, you know, the guidelines. Uh, they are 94.5% efficacious, and they uh, have the same side effect profile as, uh, you know, as uh, the Pfizer vaccine. And they were in their phase three trial, they were tested on about 30,000 people. So this is what the vaccine plan from CDC and the, and the uh, Missouri De uh, Department of Health and Senior Services. This is the guideline. Uh, so uh, they are going to start having some limited doses available to us. Uh, and then obviously they would the peak after that where there are a large number of doses available and then continued vaccination shifting to a routine strategy. And then so because there is going to be limited dosing initially, they are going to have focused vaccine administration. And uh, we'll talk about the subgroups that uh, who it's gonna be allocated to first. Uh, so phase one target is going to be the healthcare workers, essential workers, and high-risk population. Uh, now each phase, so phase 1A is healthcare workers, 1B is essential workers, and phase 1C, or that 1C may change, uh, is the, the high-risk population. Phase two is all the people that are lagging from phase one and all Missouri state residents. And then phase three, obviously the continued strategy of vaccinating every single person who is willing to get themselves vaccinated. So phase one A, that is your, the healthcare workers. They are defined as healthcare personnel and staff who may have direct or indirect exposure to COVID-19 and are unable to work from home. So if there, are, there is a healthcare worker who may be uh, patient facing, uh, so to speak, but if they are able to work from home, then they would not fall in this category. Uh, and, and this would include workers at uh, inpatient and outpatient facilities, skilled nursing uh, homes, long-term care facilities, assisted livings and residential care. We are lucky that the first four groups, so skilled nursing facility, long-term care, assisted living and residential care, we do not have to vaccinate them. 
I think the, uh, the government has made a national contract with Walgreens and CVS. So those two pharmacies will vaccinate all of those uh, people, including their residents and their uh, employees. So we only have to worry about the inpatient and outpatient facilities uh, that provide healthcare to this region. So it's just not Hannibal Regional. I think it would be uh, you know, uh, Hannibal Clinic, uh, Midwest Orthopedics, and all the other uh, folks who provide healthcare uh, within this region. The essential workers, that's 1B. So that's, again, public-facing healthcare uh, coming, uh, you know, lagging from here. First responders, childcare workers, teachers, education staff, water and waste uh, water workers, uh, food and agriculture, critical manufacturing and energy workers. And then the high-risk population, there is still a little bit of discussion happening right now. They may be pushed into 1A, uh, but they are the uh, pa you know, patients that are uh, more than 65 years old uh, or population more than 65, but then they also have BMI more than 30, chronic kidney disease, COPD, hypertension, diabetes, and heart disease. So that may be a much larger population that we would have to vaccinate, and they're still trying to figure out would we have enough doses to take care of that population or not. So when are we getting our vaccine, right? That's a million dollar question. So we should be, hopefully, be getting our vaccine either next week or the following week. Uh, it says late December because I'm just trying to be, you know. Uh, so uh, late December or January, definitely. It'd be a two dose vaccine. So let's say if we get 100 vials and, and 100 of us get the vaccine, we don't have to worry about where is my second dose going to come from and will I have to run to St. Louis to get my second dose? No, your second dose is already with CDC. They've earmarked that for you and you will get that second vial when, you're ti you know, when it's time for you to get your second vaccine or second booster dose. Uh, your, uh, the ultra cold freezer and the mid range freezer both are actually here on site. Uh, and uh, this morning we were just informed, uh, Jessica can laugh about this or cry both, uh, but we were just informed that we have to actually do a virtual inspection of the, uh, both the freezers to make sure, to prove to the state, you're laughing, I can see that, <laughs> uh, to prove to the state that we actually have the freezer and they're actually working. So uh, she's taking pictures and videos and all that kind of stuff right now to upload them. Uh, but we, we can store both the Pfizer and the Moderna vaccine here on site, which is a great thing. So uh, that's good. 51,000 doses are being released, are being shipped this week to the entire state of Missouri. Okay. Those, that 51,000 doses are going to be allocated to 10 prepositioned sites. So these are pro most likely large organizations uh, who are going to get their allocation, allocation from the state, and then they will obviously start the vaccination much earlier than the rest of us. Um, and uh, obviously that information is top secret, and as you can imagine, uh, you know, you don't want a mob or a group of people trying to get the vaccine or sabotage the vaccine, both. So I think uh, that's why no one knows. Uh, we sit on the calls every, day, every other day, but even no one, you know, we don't know who uh, or what those 10 preposition sites are. The vaccine cannot be redistributed. So, and what that means is, let's say our Hannibal Regional Medical Group Clinic in Bowling Green, they all decide, oh, we're not gonna come to Hannibal. You know, can you just send our vaccines over here? No, you have to come to this site because this site is registered as the, the vaccine uh, site for us. So as I said, 15,000 doses of Pfizer vaccine this week. So this was prepared last week. That's why it says next week. Uh, December 20th to 26th will be 63,000 of Pfizer and 105,000 of Moderna. December 27 to 31st will be 76,000 of Pfizer and 46,000 of Moderna. This is just not Hannibal Regional. This is the entire state. It comes to this, uh, you know, uh, from CDC, this many doses will be coming to the state. And then the state decides which organization gets how many uh, based on whatever you know, criteria that they have. Uh, like I said, second doses, uh, second dose is already at the CDC, so we don't have to worry about, oh my God, am I gonna get my next dose or not? Uh, and we already talked about the target population. Okay, the most important part of the co uh, conversation, uh, the rumors. Obviously you would have seen this, read this in social media, Facebook, uh, whatever other things you guys use, or even on news for that matter. But these are the things that are out there. The vaccine is rushed, so it cannot be safe. 
I can get infected by COVID-19 by getting vaccinated. That's absolutely wrong. I showed you the diagram of what part of the small particle you're getting. And so there's no way you can get infected. The flu vaccine will work against coronavirus. Please understand there are two different diseases, you know, so one does not work for the other. The mRNA will tamper your DNA. So mRNA, I mean, RNA and DNA are two separate things. The mRNA just sends messages to induce production of certain enzymes and antibodies, does not do anything to the DNA. So that's an important thing. Uh, this was new, I think the female sterilization piece about vaccine containing syncytin-1, which is vital in the formulation. Number one, the vaccine does not have any protein material. So, and syncytin is a protein, so it does not have, and, and the, in, even in the production, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the vehicle that the vaccine is being used, it's a lipid-based model, has no protein in it, and so even that is a, you know, pretty bizarre claim. The vaccine was rushed for political reasons. I think it was rushed because of the mortality that we all see and face. I don't think politics has anything to do with, uh, you know, uh, the vaccine development. Uh, the few of them are really funny. Bill and Melinda Gates will use the vaccine to collect human biometric data and will then upload to the cloud environment and connect it with cryptocurrency. So I hope we just, you know, read that and smile inside. Uh, <laughs> and then the other funny one is the microchip, which I think is probably the best one. The microchip hardware will be used in the vaccine to track Americans, and they can actually turn it off so that you can, you know, if you don't obey the government, then they may turn the chip off. So but that's also a little bit funny. Uh, and the COVID-19 virus is a ho and the vaccine both are hoax. So I hope people who, I know Leslie, who probably spent her entire <laughs> last few months in the um, uh, COVID unit, so she can tell you that it's not a hoax. And there are people that, who's sitting here that I know, who have had their, either their loved one or their family member or friends who have been infected uh, with COVID-19, may even have passed away. Uh, so. I hope people take this a little bit more seriously than just a statement from someone.